Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. Today I have a special guest. It's my brother Jim coming over to the Timmy the Tool Man studios again with his 2007 Toyota Tundra. And what we're going to do today for him is we are going to do a oil change on his 2UZ-FE engine, the 4.7 liter V8 engine. For some of you that know our channel, you might be thinking, wow, Timmy, you're actually going to show how to do an oil change? That's as basic as it can get but the fact is some people haven't ever done an oil change and they might be looking for help to know how to do it and this is kind of the gateway drug into turning wrenches one of the first things that somebody might want to do to get into auto mechanics is learn how to change their oil so without a doubt I know this video is going to have value for beginners. It's not going to have value for you, the experienced do-it-yourself mechanic, but it's going to have value for a lot of people just getting into auto mechanics. So we're going to get my brother's truck into the garage and we're going to show you how you can jack it up, support it with jack stands, and then we'll go from there. So I have my Harbor Freight low profile jack. I'm going from the front and I'm going to get the jack underneath the cross member Okay, I've got it started in the middle of the cross member. Now I'm going to jack it up. Okay, I have it up fairly high. Now I'm going to get my six ton jack stands and get them underneath the frame rails on each side. So you can see where I have the jack stand. This is on the driver's side and I have another jack stand mirroring this jack stand on the passenger side. So I'm gonna slowly lower the jack and settle the truck onto the jack stands, which will give me plenty of room to work underneath the truck. Once you get the vehicle lowered onto the jack stands, you're gonna to wanna to go to each jack stand and just make sure that it looks like it's really solid on the frame. And then you can remove your hydraulic jack out of the way and safely work underneath the vehicle. So this is your skid plate right here. And then you see this plastic part of the bumper. Normally there would be three clips that hold the plastic part of the bumper to the skid plate, but on my brother's truck, they're missing. They're not there. So I can't show you that part of it. There's five 12 millimeter bolts that hold the skid plate to the frame. There's two on the front, one through this hole on the driver's side. And then if you come over here, there's another hole on the passenger side. If you go further back, there's a bolt through this access hole right here on the driver's side. If you go to the center in the rear, there's another one right through here. And then on the passenger side, there's another one through here. I'm gonna use my quarter inch DeWalt impact to zip them out. If you didn't have an impact gun, you can certainly just do it with a regular ratchet and extension. But since I own an impact gun, it's gonna make it a lot quicker for me to zip them out. I'm on the last bolt, so I'm holding the skid plate with my other hand. Now this has hooks that hook into the front cross member, and you can see the hooks right here. So as you can see, with the skid plate off, you have easy access to the oil filter. Some people are resistant to removing it because they think it's extra work, and they try all these weird ways to be able to get in here and not make a mess. I don't recommend that. Just take the frickin' skid plate out of your way and make your life easier and less messy. So I'm gonna start the draining of the oil first. The drain plug is a 14 millimeter and I'm gonna break that free with my ratchet and then get a drain container underneath there. For the catch container for the oil, I'm using this 18 quart container. This engine holds 6.6 .6 quarts and my other shorter drain pans I think would be at the very limit and it would be a higher chance of me spilling. So that's why I'm using this one. And then we're just gonna let that drain and we're gonna work on getting the oil filter out. The oil filter is nice and accessible on the driver's side. Now, normally if it wasn't tightened by a big gorilla or someone who doesn't really know what they're doing, you should be able to spin these off with your hand. 
but quite often they are tightened a little bit tighter than hand tight and you'll have to use a tool. So I'll try it first, see if I can break it free with my hand. Nope. That was tight and tighter than I would ever get it. So I just have a standard filter wrench. There's all kinds of different types of filter wrenches. You could get the ones that fit on the end of the filter and then you get onto it with a ratchet. This is just a really cheapo type, but it works really well. And the way it works is it cams. So you have to figure out which direction you need to turn it. But you can see if I turn it this way, it opens up. And if I turn it this way, it closes down and reduces the diameter grabbing onto the filter. So I have to go lefty loosey. Oh, that thing suckers on there. This might be harder than I thought. This bar's in the way for me being able to get a good turn with it. Might have to reach from up above and if I can't get it from down here. In order to get some additional leverage, I got up on a step stool and I got the filter wrench on the filter from up above. It gives me a little bit more of a throw with the filter wrench. And that filter was on there super, super tight. I've never had a filter start to dent from the force being applied with the filter wrench. That means whoever tightened this thing on did not know what the hell they were doing. They tightened it way, way too tight. I'm actually spinning the handle of the filter wrench into the area where the fan goes. It's giving me a little bit of extra throw. Okay, that's finally loose enough to where I can spin it off the rest of the way with my hand. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my hand on here and spin it off the rest of the way. And I'm gonna get my drain pan just right underneath here. And there we go, we'll just let that drain for a while. We got six quarts out via the engine oil pan and then we're getting a little bit more out here. There is oil in the filter and just a little bit more in the oil delivery system. Of course, we're using a Toyota filter. There's the part number there. And they always come with a little bit of plastic over the top just to keep any dirt and debris out of there. So just use a little screwdriver, pop it off. And then this filter comes with a little bit of grease from Toyota. But what I like to actually do is add a little more lubricant. So I get my engine oil and I dip my finger in there and then I smear engine oil over the gasket. So this way it spins onto the filter housing nice and it gets a good seal. After most of the oil is drained out of the filter housing, I like to wipe it clean and make sure that the old gasket from the filter you removed is not on there because it can happen, it's pretty rare, but just double check and make sure there's not a old gasket on here. And then just grab your filter, line it up with the housing and spin it on. For the proper tightening, I just go hand tight. Because you have pretty easy access in here, hand tight should be good enough. You get it hand tight and good enough. If you're a big, strong, like a NFL lineman, then maybe hand tight might be too tight. Or you're a petite girl, maybe hand tight might not be enough. But you get it to where you can't turn it anymore and that should be good enough. The instructions in the Toyota factory service manual tell you that you get the filter to where the filter is touched down onto the filter housing and then you give it three quarters of a more turn. That's the textbook way that Toyota tells you to do it. But I just go by hand tight and usually that has not failed me. I've never had a filter come off and I never had a filter leak. After you get your filter on, just go through and wipe up all the extra oil that hit whatever it hit on its way down to the ground. And this way, it's not gonna fool you that you might think you have a leak later on. So just wipe up all the excess oil that dripped on the hoses and the sway bar and whatever else it hit. I'm now ready to get the drain plug back into the bottom of the oil pan. You always want to use a new drain plug gasket. Don't reuse them. When I took the drain plug out, you'll notice that the old one stayed glued onto the bottom of the oil pan. So I need to knock that off. So what I normally do is I just grab a flat blade screwdriver and I just push it off. Sometimes you have to give it a tap, but there's the old one off. I'll wipe it clean. I'll slide the new drain plug gasket onto the drain plug and I'll get it started. 
For engine oil drain plugs, I normally don't bother torquing them, but if you want to torque them, the torque spec is 29 foot-pounds. I'm just gonna go by feel with my 3 8 ratchet extension and 14 millimeter socket. And there we go. According to my torque elbow, that's right around 29 foot-pounds. And then just wipe up around the drain plug, make sure that there's no drips there because when we start it up and get back underneath here to check for leaks, we don't want to be fooled by some old oil there. So wipe it up really nice. Here's the oil fill cap on the driver's side of the engine. You just spin it off lefty loosey and just set it aside. Grab your funnel of choice. I like this wider funnel I have, so it's less chance of me missing and making a mess. The engine oil capacity for this 2UZ engine, according to the factory service manual, with an engine oil filter change is 6.6 .6 quarts. I'm gonna pour in six and a half quarts, and then once we run the engine and get it on level ground, I'll double check the level and dial it in from there. The engine oil I chose for my brother is this Castrol Edge high mileage. It's a full synthetic oil, 5W30 grade. You have lots of choices with engine oil. You can go conventional, non-synthetic. You can do a partial synthetic, whatever floats your boat. So choose the engine oil that you prefer. I recommend a full synthetic, because why not? Synthetic is better than conventional, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinion. Almost every jug of oil you buy is gonna have some type of aluminum cover on it. So just take a little screwdriver, tear it, and pull it out of your way. These bigger containers hold five quarts. So I'm gonna pour this entire thing in and then measure off another quart and a half into this one gallon container that I have. One thing that I forgot to give you just an additional warning is it's not uncommon that somebody will be doing their engine oil change and start pouring oil in and guess what they did? They forgot to put the engine oil drain plug back in or they forgot to put the oil filter back in. So do yourself a sanity check before you start pouring engine oil into your engine. Make damn sure that you didn't get sidetracked before you start pouring engine oil in. It's not just going right out the bottom of your engine, which a lot of guys have done. And that's why I'm telling you. I went ahead and added the additional quart and a half. And so now it should be most of the way full. I'm gonna take my funnel out and I'm gonna put my cap back on. Now what we wanna do is we wanna start the engine, get underneath and just make sure there's no leaks from the oil filter or from the drain plug area. And after that, we'll lower the vehicle back to the ground, we'll get it level, and then we'll double check the fluid level via the dipstick. So we've got the engine running, I'm gonna go underneath and check for leaks. The filter looks good, and the engine oil drain pan plug looks good. Now that we've checked that the engine oil filter isn't leaking, the oil drain plug isn't leaking, I'm gonna pour the old oil into this five gallon container. This is something nice to have if you like to do your own vehicle maintenance. And then you can take this to an auto parts store like O'Reilly's and other ones like AutoZone. And they have a program that they will accept your old oil and then properly dispose of it. If you don't wanna buy something like this, you could just pour the old oil back into the containers that you got from the auto parts store with the new oil. So now that we're done with the oil change, we confirmed that there's no leaks from the oil filter, from the drain plug. We're gonna get our skid plate back connected to the vehicle with the five bolts. All right, we have the vehicle back down on all four tires and currently where it's sitting, it's not completely level. So I'm gonna have my brother drive the truck further into the garage to get it on level surface because you're not gonna get an accurate reading unless you're on level surface. On any automotive fluid, you check it on level ground. If you're not on level ground, you're not getting an accurate level reading. Now that we have the vehicle on level ground, we're gonna check the engine oil fluid level. The dipstick is on the passenger side right near the air box. So you wanna pull it out, wipe off the dipstick, and then reinsert it. You'll see that there's two dots on this dipstick. 
anywhere in between the dots is technically good, but you're completely full at the upper dot. If you're below the bottom dot, that means you can add a full quart in. So I'm going to see where the level's at. Because the oil is so clean, it's hard to see, but it's somewhere midway between the two dots. So that means I have to add a little bit more engine oil to get it completely full. I added a little bit and now I'm just double checking the level. It's pretty much all the way there. It's just a little bit below the top dot. So I might just add a smidge more and call it good. All right, we are all done with the oil change on this 2UZ FE engine that Toyota made for a lot of different models. And it's on Lexus models too. Like I said during the video, some people are so resistant to removing their front skid plate, but removing the front skid plate has a lot of value. You can look underneath your engine, you can spot things before they become a big problem like a leak starting or a hose that is cracking or fraying things of that nature. So it's not a bad idea to remove your skid plate on a fairly regular basis so you can get a visual of the underside of your engine and catch things before they become a major problem and leave you stranded. There's all kinds of different opinions of how often you should change your oil. Some people go really old school and do it every 3,000 miles even though they're using a full synthetic. Some people like myself do it at a 5,000 mile interval regardless of the fact that I am using a full synthetic. And then some people really push the envelope and they're trying to get every ounce of mileage out of that oil and they're sending oil samples into Blackstone Labs and pushing it to the nth degree. I don't subscribe to that. I believe that changing your oil on a regular basis is the number one thing that you can do to keep your engine running for a very, very long time. So. I would recommend don't push it even though you're sending your little samples to Blackstone Labs and they're telling you you can go a million more miles. I don't do that. So choose the interval that you feel good with and go from there. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean and special guest Jim, my older brother. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Click on that subscribe button and also click on that little notification bell if you'd like to be notified when we put up new content on our channel, which we are always putting up very cool and informative content on our channel. Peace out, happy wrenching, sick mods, and sick maintenance on your Toyota or Lexus vehicle. Bye-bye.